So a lot of times when you're at your lowest point, you can't even envision anything better than that in your life. And I can tell you that I went from being at rock bottom to where I am. It didn't take all that long when you think about it. You know, once you bounce and you can see past that, you start to treat life a little differently and you take every, you know, you really treat every day as important and you have to be productive. So I learned a lot of things along the way and that's really what I want to share is that, you know, that's my message is that, you know, things will get better and there's a lot of reasons to uh, keep going and just a lot of things to look forward to. And welcome to Monetize Your Mind. This is Pat Dewar. The host of the show is Bob Bear, a serial entrepreneur as well as a publisher with Seeger Publishing. One of the things about today's show that I think you'll really enjoy is that we've brought in a person that has done extremely well in real estate, but even beyond that, has done all the work and then found out that he could create a lifestyle. And that's something that most of the business owners that I know really want in their life published authors, they're writing the book to create some sort of nine pound pearl rolling into the DNA of mankind. They want it out there, but the thing that they really want, most of them, is they want to be able to live the lifestyle of their dreams. They want to create the life that they want. And with that, thank you so much, Bob, for bringing on Mike Wolf. So with that. Thank you, Mike Wolf from Calgary, Canada. It's great to have you here. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. One thing I want to talk about, Mike, and kind of dispel a little bit right off the bat is when people hear about a real estate investor or someone that teaches other people how to invest in real estate, some people get a stereotype in their mind. But I've discovered that you are really interested in helping people in more than just real estate. In fact, when you first came to me and talked to me about publishing a book for you, you said, well, you had two books in mind. One of your books was how to help people overcome despondency, depression, and basically a book on happiness. Mm -hmm. And the other was a book on real estate. And you said, which one should I do first? And we, we came to a mutual conclusion, and that was the people that know you, your followers, the people that you take into cities across the U.S. are your real estate people. So we'll start with the real estate, but in the book, we're going to embed some of your story, some of how you have become a happy person, even though you always weren't. So sure. I just wanted to start out by letting people know there, there's some real interesting stories in your background. Yeah, well, I've been uh, doing this for a while, and you know, most people who know me now, they say, Mike, you're always smiling, you're always happy, you're always working, how do you stay so happy? And, and uh, part of it is really that when I look at my to-do list every day, everything on there is stuff I want to do. If I don't want to do it, I've got other people in the background that help me with it. And so I basically live my life on purpose every single day. But there was a point in my life where I definitely didn't have that. And it wasn't, well, if we go way back in time, there was a part in my life where I had a car accident, I was depressed, I was uh, basically stuck at home for eight months straight. And anybody who knows me knows I'm not a homebody by any stretch. And so I got, I got to a really low point in my life and I managed to pull myself out. It's a long story, but I managed to pull myself out without the use of antidepressants. And, you know, I, I just uh, look at, there's some, uh, the economy with what it's going through right now. I see a lot of people that are in that same bleak, dark mm -hmm. spot in their life right now. And I know that I've got the ability uh, to pull them out of that uh, situation. And so, uh, although I love, real estate and whatnot. I also love to help people. My background before real estate was psychology, so I always have this love of helping people. And there's just you know a lot of parallels between what's going on in, in the real estate market, the economy, and just people's lives in general, and how they're, uh, they're, they're basically, a, a lot of people are at rock bottom. They're trying to rebuild now and basically start over. And as they start over, uh, there's gonna be a lot of lessons in the book on how maybe they could you know, change how they rebuild to have something a little bit different than what they had before that maybe is strategic in, in making them more happy instead of you know, just having more toys and more material goods. So that's kind of the message. The, the working title that we're working with, it may not end with that because there are some other books with this title, but we're talking about the working title being The Comeback. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And that applies in several ways, doesn't it? Well, absolutely. And, and like I said, there's a lot of parallels between what's going on in you know, the economy and just you know, people obviously being uh, you know, affected by the, uh, the recession and people coming back as well as the economy coming back. And you know, a lot of times when you're at your lowest point, you don't see anything but negative. That's all, that's all you can't even envision anything better than that in your life. And I can tell you that I went from being at rock bottom uh, to where I am. It didn't, take, it didn't take all that long when you think about it. You know, I, once you bounce and you can see past that, 
you start to treat life a little differently and you take every, you know, you, you really treat every day as important and you have to be productive. Mm -hmm. And so I learned a lot of things along the way and that's really what I want to share is that, you know, that's my message is that, you know, things will get better and there's a lot of reasons to, uh, to keep going and just a lot of things to look forward to. I find it a little humorous. You, you tell me that at one time you had a lot of toys. Now because you're on the road all the time helping people invest, teaching people how to invest, that you basically live out of a couple of suitcases. Pretty much. You could afford the toys, but you're just happy without them now. Absolutely. Matter of fact, I'm happier because you know, I had a point in my life where I basically traveled for two years around the world. And what I did is I put all the things that at that time were really important to me. You know, I had to have the best stereo and the nicest TV. I put that all in storage and, and it seemed really tough to give it up at that time. And I thought, how am I going to live without all these things for two years? But as I traveled more and more, that stuff became less and less important to me. It became a, a you know, distant memory. And the things that became important were the people that I met, the adventures that I had, the things that I learned along the way. And when I came back, I really had no desire for those, for those things. And you know, these days, as you mentioned, I live out of a couple of suitcases. I have probably 90% of my possessions with me at any given time. Every now and then, I like to go home and dump out the suitcase and change it for new clothes because you get sick of the same ones. But really, most of what I own is, is with me at any given time. And it gives me a lot of freedom where you know, here we are filming this TV show. Uh, you know, if I have to stay later, I can. If I want to hop a flight to somewhere different, be at the beach or where, whatever it is, it makes me happy. I can do it. But a lot of people really become a slave to their possessions. And that's one of the messages that, you know, as I did that trip around the world and met more and more, you know, people, I saw there's people on the other side of the world that don't have nearly what we have from a materialistic standpoint, yet they're grateful and they're happy. And they're just, you know, satisfied with what they, you know, have every day meeting their needs. Whereas here in North America, you know, people are, are upset if their neighbor gets a better boat than them. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Business Spotlight, excuse me, is Montage Your Mind. And we'll be right back.